Winter blues and the more clinical seasonal affective disorder are very real issues during the winter months. Here to talk about this from Niagara Health, we have Steve Matek. Steve, colder weather, people don't get out as much, and that does tend to affect them emotionally. How do people deal with that? It really does, Mike. Um, you know, during the winter months, the changes in weather, particularly the sunlight, and also being inside, you know, with the reduced social activity and exercise, it really does have an effect on our mental health and our ability to, you know, just live our best potential. And while um, the Blue Monday is a myth, the winter blues are a real thing. They are a little bit different than seasonal affective disorder, which is a clinical kind of presentation that starts in the early fall and leads to the spring months. Um, seasonal affective disorder, it requires a little more um, treatment with intense kind of therapy or medications, but the winter blues can affect us all, and there are some really good tips that we can talk about that can help us offset the um, symptoms of winter blues. Before we get to those tips, let's talk a little bit about seasonal affective disorder. How do you sure. diagnose that and what are some of the treatments? For sure, Mike, that's a great question. So seasonal affective disorder is usually diagnosed by a physician, right? It can be your family doctor, but it can also be a psychiatrist. And um, like I said, some general symptoms of that are loss of interest in the things that you love to do followed by like a persistent low mood that lasts and is very um, difficult to maybe get out of. Um, also low motivation and oversleeping, loss of appetite, things like that are hallmarks of um, seasonal affective disorder. So the treatments are medication usually? Yes, medication and, um, and usually some therapy treatments are very effective. Also having some, a good support system is primary in getting better. Steve, we all get the winter blues from time to time, let's face it. Longer darkness, and that really affects us. You, you mentioned lack of sunlight. That's not just mood, but it's also physical with that lack of vitamin D that we're absorbing. 100%, yeah, Mike, you're on the right path because you know a lot of people, they take this personally. They think, oh, this is something I can just get out of. But really, there is a biological component to this. And it affects our, you know, our dopamine, our serotonin, important neurotransmitters that are responsible for you know, our motivation, our well-being, our happiness. So um, some of the tips that we can talk about today, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you. Well, let's, let's get into them. What are some of the things that you would say to someone? You're an RN, a registered right. nurse with Niagara Health. Right. People turn to you for advice. What are some of the things you tell someone who has the winter blues? Sure. So the first thing I would say is being social, you know, trying to increase your sociability, even if you don't want to. That can be talking to friends on the phone or FaceTiming, but... FaceTime is a good one, right? It's a great one, especially for seniors in long-term care homes or in their apartment buildings. Um, FaceTime can be a big game changer. But, you know, going out for coffee or even um, calling a friend to go do some lighthearted activities is something that I highly recommend. Many seniors are afraid to go out during the winter months, icy surfaces, afraid that a fall will affect them. It takes much longer to heal the older we get, let's face it. Yeah, 100%, and the risk is real. So often I try uh, looking for things closer to home. If there's a friend in your apartment building that you can go out for coffee with, or like I said again, the good old FaceTime, that's a, a, that's a real solution that can um, be implemented fairly easily. Are there any diet suggestions as well? Sure. So diets, that's something you want to always check with your uh, family physician because of allergies or medications, things like that. But generally eating, you know, a balanced diet of getting good protein, uh, vegetables, fruits, that's always something that is important. As you mentioned earlier, vitamin D supplementation can be helpful for people with a seasonal effect or a seasonal effective and the winter blues. Do you see a difference between men and women with uh, the amount of them having the winter blues or with how long it takes to get out of that? Well, generally because we are, um, you know, humans, right? It affects us both equally. So um, in, in my perspective, uh, you know, th these are all things that um, it doesn't really have a statistical difference. The colder it gets, does that tend to set in longer as well? 
Well, it's not necessarily the temperature. It's more the amount of sunlight that we're getting. So the sunlight, like you mentioned, is a primary source of vitamin D. And that is really the critical kind of factor. Some people find that having a seasonal light um, that you can purchase um, to get that extra vitamin D is helpful in some certain. We just had the holidays, and as we know, holidays can be a very joyous time, but there are a lot of people who feel more lonely at the holiday season. You're right. The holidays can be triggering for a lot of different people. And one of the things about that is, is that it's important to get out and start moving. Exercise can be a huge factor in improving our neurotransmitters, but also our hormones as well. So for males, the testosterone um, exercise can increase testosterone, and it also gets us sometimes in the gym working out around other people, and that can be kind of a twofold, right? You're getting the exercise and you're getting the social, the social interaction. As I said before, you are an RN and you deal with a lot of people trying to get them through these winter blues. What are some of the things that you do to help them? Right, some of the things that I do is I provide education around this. Um, trying to reduce stigma is an important factor in getting better because stigma doesn't really help anybody. Um, we're all human and these are biological components most of the time. So, you know, it's, it's just something that we can come to terms with and look at it through a different light and get the support that we need. Education is a huge thing in getting better. First step could be to visit the Niagara Health website. There are resources sure. there. Yeah, niagarahealth.on.ca has a ton of different community resources. There's also the Coast Crisis Line. If you're ever feeling like you're in crisis or unsafe, um, their number is 1-866-550-5205. That's particularly the access line that you can call if you're needing someone to talk to. Steve, thanks so much for coming in to talk about this yeah, today. Yeah, no problem, Mike.